Welcome back to the Organic Chemistry Basics. Today I will show you how to draw organic molecules using skeletal structures. In a previous video, we learned how to draw molecules, including organic and inorganic molecules. The question now, what is an organic molecule? An organic molecule or compound is one that contains mainly carbon atoms, but also atoms like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and you'll even see sulfur and phosphorus. The reason why carbon is at the center of organic compounds is because carbon in the hybridized state has four electrons available for bonding. This allows you to attach multiple atoms and make complex structures which is ideal for a living system. We have already seen how to draw a molecule in a condensed and a Lewis structure. The example we used was propane and we saw the condensed structure where you simply write out what atoms are connected and how and the Lewis structure which shows you exactly where every atom is attached to another atom. But what if you're trying to show a molecule like hexane or octane? Hexane is a chain of six carbons and octane a chain of eight. Don't worry about the names because we'll cover that in a future video, but for now just look at the sheer size of these molecules. Imagine you had to show a reaction in where you have to draw these molecules over and over. This is where we introduce the concept of skeletal structures for organic molecules. A skeletal structure is a line structure for drawing organic molecules that saves time and provides you with a very clear picture. Let's use butane as our example. First we have the condensed structure for butane. Then we have the Lewis structure for butane. Now for the skeletal structure. When you think of a skeleton, you think of bones or simply lines representing a bigger picture with details that are not shown. The same thing applies when you're drawing a molecule. You draw lines where every line represents carbon atoms at the end and the bond between them. For a molecule like butane, let's count the carbon atoms and we have a total of four. So now let's draw lines representing these carbon atoms. When you put your pen down, that's the first carbon atom. The end of the line is number two, three, and four. In the beginning, if you're confused, draw circles at the end and intersection of every line to show you where you have your carbon atom. Hydrogen atoms are not shown in a skeletal structure. Instead, imagine that they're there on the carbon atoms. Again, in the beginning, you might want to draw little lines representing where you have hydrogen atoms, but eventually you'll get comfortable and used to drawing a skeleton without any hints like circles or lines. Now let's look at pentane. Once again, I first count my carbons. I have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. So I will draw a total of four lines because when I put my pen down, that's one, two, three, four, five. Once again, in case you're confused, one, two, three, four, five with all associated hydrogens. Let's try to understand where the skeletal structure comes from. We discussed that a carbon atom with four bonds is sp3 hybridized. We know that an sp3 hybrid orbital will have 109.5 degrees as their bond angle. Contrary to the straight carbon chain that we're used to seeing till now, these atoms are actually situated at 109.5 degrees from each other and we can imagine that the substituents or let's say hydrogens coming off of these carbons will have one coming out of the page directly at me and the other going into the page fading into the background letting me have the carbons flat against my paper. Another concept to consider is the rotation about a carbon to carbon sigma or single bond. Because there's only one bond between the two atoms connecting them, the atom is free to turn in place or rotate about that single carbon bond. If I look at the bond between carbons 3 and 4, I can imagine that this bond can slowly turn, which means that substituent number 5 will be facing up, and as it rotates, it'll come downward. Imagine a pinwheel or a fan, how the ends keep moving up and down, up and down in a circle. Taking this diagram into account, I can represent my molecule this way. I can also represent the same molecule this way. Notice that carbon 5 is up in the first representation, but carbon 5 is down in the second representation. These two are in fact the same molecule. 
Let's take a look at a more complex molecule, cyclohexane. Again, don't worry about the naming just yet. For now, just notice that we have six carbons connected in a ring formation with hydrogens sticking out on every side. And the skeletal structure for cyclohexane will look like a very simple hexagon. So I want you to notice two very, very important factors. One, the structure for cyclohexane drawn out with the hydrogens are very messy, and this one is very neat and clean. And two, imagine how long it would take to draw that cyclohexane with the hydrogens compared to how fast it is to draw a very simple hexagon. Now let's consider a molecule that has a double bond. In this example, trans-2-butene, I have one, two, three, four carbons. So first I will draw the same skeleton. Now I notice that there's a double bond between carbons two and three. So all I do is add a second line between those two carbons. And here we have the skeletal structure for trans-2-butene. Drawing the structure for a triple bond gets a little bit tricky because this is a linear molecule with 180 degrees as its bond angle. But as before, we count and number our carbons and then try to copy the same concept in the skeletal structure. Notice here that the entire molecule is one straight line. So we will draw a straight line where I have one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, and four carbons. How do I tell these apart? I add my triple bond towards the center where you now see that carbons two and carbons three are attached to a triple bond, but the two CH3 groups that come to the right and to the left of this triple bond have to be linear as well. You will sometimes see this molecule represented incorrectly as if it's a double bond with an extra bond added. Now this is easier to draw and understand because you see the angles for every carbon. However, it's not correct because a triple bond should have a linear or 180 degree representation. You will sometimes be asked to give the condensed or Lewis structure for a skeletal representation of a molecule. So let's see how to work backwards with this example. First thing to do is number your structure. I have five carbons in a row, and then I have a sixth carbon on top and a seventh carbon on the bottom. For the Lewis structure, I will start by following this carbon chain. And coming off of carbon number two, I have one carbon. And coming down from carbon number three, I have another carbon. You find the number of hydrogens by looking at the carbon in question and doing this simple formula. Four minus the number of bonds equals your hydrogens. A carbon can only have four bonds. So if carbon has a bond to one other carbon, it can only have three more bonds to hydrogen. If carbon has a bond to two carbons, then it can only have two more bonds to hydrogen. This carbon at the end only has a bond to this carbon number two. So that means I have four minus one gives me three hydrogens on this carbon. Carbon number two has a bond to carbon six, one, and three. Three bonds means I have one hydrogen left. Carbon number three has a bond to carbon two, four, and seven. That means if I have three bonds, I have one hydrogen left. Carbon four is bound to carbon three and five. That means I have two hydrogens. And carbon five is only bound to carbon four. That means I have three additional hydrogens. Carbons six and seven are each bound once. That means each of them also has just three hydrogens. You can also apply a visual shortcut. Terminal carbon will always have three hydrogens. Any carbon that is between two other carbons with nothing else on it, for example, carbon four, will have two hydrogens. And carbons like two and three that have additional bonds, you'll have to look and see how many hydrogens are left over. Now let's draw the condensed structure. Notice that carbon five is simply a CH3. Carbon four we said is a CH2. Carbon three only has one hydrogen that makes it a CH. And then we put a CH3 in parentheses, showing that it's also coming off of this carbon. Instead of the parentheses, another option is to draw a bond showing this CH3 on the bottom. Carbon 2 also has just one hydrogen and a CH3 group. And finally, we have carbon 1, which is a CH3 group. And these are the two ways that you can draw the condensed structure looking directly at your line structure. 
If you're still confused, draw it out in the Lewis structure and then verify piece by piece that every group is correct. Looking at my Lewis structure, I have a CH3 group, CH2, a CH that has a CH3 on it, another CH with a CH3, and finally my last CH3. As you can see, the Lewis structure backs up my condensed structural formula and so I have the molecule. So far, we've only shown the shortcut for carbon and hydrogen. But what if you have another atom in your molecule, like oxygen or nitrogen, that will frequently show up in organic chemistry? There is no shortcut for these atoms, so you simply write them in to your skeletal structure. Our example here is ethanol, or drinking alcohol. We start the skeletal structure as we did before. We'll number the two carbons and then draw a line representing one carbon on each end. Now for the OH group, which is not a carbon, we actually have to show these atoms. So I will show a bond coming off that final carbon to the oxygen, and now I have to add the hydrogen. Anytime a hydrogen is not connected directly to the carbon, you have to draw it in. So the proper skeletal structure for ethanol is drawn like this. Now remember that oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons, so don't forget to add those in. Let's look at this molecule one more time. We have the two carbon atoms, and then we have the OH group. Notice that this is a carbon atom. This line represents the bond between the carbon and oxygen, meaning this is not a carbon atom. That is simply where the oxygen attaches to this molecule. Nitrogen is treated the same way as oxygen, as in this propanamine example. So I represent my three carbon atoms. Then I draw a bond to the nitrogen and show my two hydrogens. I can write the hydrogens in as simply writing an H2, or I can represent them with a bond coming from the nitrogen to each hydrogen. As with oxygen, don't forget your lone pairs, and this is my molecule. Here we have a more complex example, butanoic acid. We start by numbering our carbons. I represent my chain, and then look at my substituents. Of carbon 2, I have a methyl group. I represent that by a line going straight up. And of carbon 4, I have a carboxylic acid. Don't worry about the specifics of the functional group just yet, as it will be discussed in the next video. But a carboxylic acid has a double bound oxygen and then a single bound oxygen with a hydrogen on it. I add in my valence electrons and my molecule is complete. For our final example, we'll look at glutamic acid. We'll start on the left where we have an NH3 group. Then we look at our carbons. I have one, two, three, four, five carbons where the NH3 group is attached to carbon number 2. So I will attach a carbon to NH3 and number that 2. Coming off of carbon 2 to the right, I have carbon number 1. And on the other side, I have carbon 3, 4, and 5. I will fill in my non-hydrogen atoms first. On carbon number 1, I have my carboxylic acid, or actually carboxylate anion, because it's negatively charged. On carbon number 5, I have another carboxylate anion. And finally, I will fill in all my hydrogens. Remember from our formula that the number of hydrogens are found by subtracting the number of carbon bonds from 4. So carbon 4 has 2 bonds. 4 minus 2 gives me 2 hydrogens. Same thing for carbon 3. Carbon number 2 has 3 bonds, so I add 1 hydrogen. Carbon number 1 already has 4 bonds, so I have no hydrogens. And this is my final product showing the Lewis structure of an amino acid skeletal structure. I hope you found this video very useful. If you learned anything from this video, please show your appreciation by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, I will be happy to help you with them. Simply post your questions in the comments below. You can also email me your questions to tutorials at you can find me online at www.lea, spelled L-E-A-H, the number 4, S-C-I, dot com. You can also find me right here on my YouTube channel, Lea for Sci Tutorials, or search for Lea for Sci on Facebook and Twitter.